When I got the call, I was quite intrigued as to, you know, why me? So when I went and met him, he said, look, uh, we are, the economy is in dire straits. Uh, it is, uh, we are running low reserves, in fact, negative reserves in a sense. And for a sovereign country as big as Pakistan, nuclear power, so many, a large population, etc., this is not the way to live. So we need to get a team together to fix this uh, whole situation. And we think you would be well suited for this. Are you interested? He said, we'll, we won't interfere. We'll let you do what you have to do. And we want just the country to breathe better and the economy to have growth so the people get a better future. I said, that challenge I will take. And I took it. To me, I'm a great believer in transparency. That if you put all your cards on the table and you share ideas and you share it with your people and the world at large, you will govern better and you will be wiser and let people critique it. We shouldn't take criticism personally, but in a public office, everybody takes pot shots at leaders, uh, physical shots and other shots. So that uh, uh, you have to develop a DNA that you are serving your country. After three and a half years, they, we had a prime minister, but uh, the feeling was he was not up to the level which was required. So they said we should get a new prime minister. I was told that you would be the party candidate. The party nominated me and there will be a by-election. The MP who was in that constituency resigned in my favor, but we still have to go through an election. The last day of the campaign, you get a bit careless. So you get euphoric because everywhere you go, there are crowds of people and trying to, uh, you know, uh, support you and whatever. So I finished the meeting, public meeting. There were 5,000 people and there were steel barricades on both sides with people who lined up just to see you and waving. So I told my security chief that I'd like to go and shake hands. He said, no, sir, you can't go near the barricade. Please get into the car because they're just too many people here and it can be tr tr tricky. So he put me into the car and closed the door. And the car had moved from, say, about three feet. And as it moved, suddenly there was a loud bang. And uh, the driver died immediately. In my, he fell, I picked, sort of, I was behind him. I put my subconscious reaction immediately, held him and put him back. But he just left, he was gone. By the time I reached, there was a crowd of journalists, international, local. So I went to the, went in, washed my face, came back. My staff said, better you talk to them so they can go and file their stories. So I said, this is a despicable act. It is a cowardly act and I'm against extremism and terrorism. And I'm determined to fight it now. As you reflect on it in the days after, it, it haunts you how close you were to death and the fact that you escaped.